Hi, fifth graders. This is Mrs. Lemoyne again, and today we're going to be doing Unit 5, Place Value Patterns and Decimal Operations. And we're going to start with Lesson 1. What is one thousandth? Our goal today is to make sense of thousandths. What fraction of the whole picture is a single square tile? What is an estimate that's too high, too low, and about right? <clears throat> um, let's see. So I'm looking at this tile, and I see that there are tiny little tiles in there. Each one is so tiny. Look, let's see if I can circle one. Let's see, about right here, right? Tiny, tiny, tiny. So what fraction of the whole picture is one single square tile? Well, I know it's going to be one over something, yeah? And so to estimate that, um, let's say too low would be um, one over maybe a million. That would be too small. I don't think there's a million tiles there. And maybe too high would be something like um, one. One would be one right? Or one over a hundred, right? Because I think that there are more than a hundred tiles in this mosaic. So about right, let's see, hmm, do you think that there's a thousand tiles? Two thousand? I'm thinking there might be three thousand tiles in there, and I'm totally guessing. I don't even have a strategy that I'm thinking of yet. Um, it's a lot of tiles. So let's think about a way that we can do that in some sort of uh, systematic, so we can make an educated estimate. So if I think about this, I can, I can kind of maybe uh, count some of the tiles in this area here and then make an estimate to go over. But I do notice that some of these tiles are not even the same size. So let's think about this. So let's go across here. I have one, two, oops. That's the wrong slide. Let's go back, get back my pencil here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, maybe twelve slide uh, tiles that go across here. And it looks like we, we can count these, right? That would be a big number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And I am really guesstimating because I can't always see in this picture what those tiles look like. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. And remember we're estimating. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and just say there is probably 60 tiles going across here. So we said that there might be 12 this way and then 60 this way, and that's just for this section here. So if I multiply those two numbers, so I'm going to do 12 times 6, because I learned from the last unit that I can just add a 0 to that. 6 times 2 is 12. 6 times 1 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So about 720. So then if I come kind of come over here, there might be 720 here, 720 here. Right? One, two, three, four, and then maybe five, maybe more than five. But let's just stay, stick with that. So then again, I'm estimating, and, and remember, estimating is supposed to be easy, and I'm making this really complicated. So five sevens, five sevens, right? So if we just estimated 700 times five, will we get 3,500? So I'm going to say about right is going to be about 35, one thirty-five hundredth. There was a lot of different ways you could have done that, and I did make it a little bit more complicated than I think they wanted us to do it, but that's what I see there. So it's probably a little bit more. All right, let's go on. But I can see that that's a small fraction. It's a very tiny fraction. All right, what do I know about one-tenth? Well, I know that if I drew a box, let's draw that. If I drew a tape diagram and I split it into 10 pieces, 10 equal size pieces, six, seven, eight, nine, 
and that's not equal, but you're going to pretend that it is, that this piece right here would be one-tenth. And what do I know about a hundred? Well, I know that if I had a square in each one of these, two, three, four, five, six, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, right? And then I would have ten going down. That this little piece right here would be a hundred, right? So it's one out of a hundred pieces. That's what one hundredth is, and it looks like that as a fraction. And this is one tenth. So one thousandth would be one out of one thousand. So I'd have a square with a thousand pieces and it would be one little piece out of that. That's what I already know about that. I also know that I can write these same numbers as decimals. As decimals, right? So I can write this as zero and one tenth. This as zero and one one hundredth, right? Tenths, hundredths. And then this one would be zero and tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So this is the same as one, one thousandth. This is the same as one hundredth, and that's the same as one tenth. That's what I already know about them. Okay, let's see what they ask us next. What are some ways to represent one tenth? Well, I can write it as a fraction or a decimal, or I can draw a rectangle and divide it into ten equal pieces, and I can put it on, or I can put it on a number line as well, right? So if I had a number line, let's do that one because we didn't represent that. Here's a zero, here's one, two, three. Let's make it bigger, let's see, so I can do tenths. So here's my zero, and I'll say that's half, and so that's one, there's half, and there's two. So one-tenth would be one of the ten pieces over here, so this would be one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so one tenth would be here on the number line, zero point one. What was challenging about representing one hundredth without drawing a diagram? Without drawing a diagram. It was hard to divide something into a hundred pieces because that's a lot. So that was kind of hard. What was challenging about representing one one thousandth without drawing a diagram? Dividing a rectangle into a thousand pieces would take forever. That's why I didn't do it, right? I said if there was a large rectangle with a thousand pieces in it, that's one of it. That's why I didn't do it, right? Because it would take me forever. So, let's see what's next. So in this activity, we're going to use grids. Thank goodness, because I am not good at drawing these things. The grid represents one, so this would be one whole. So what does the shaded region represent? Well, if this is one whole, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pieces, and they've shaded one, it's one out of ten, isn't it? One out of ten. Okay. The second one says, and remember, we could write that as one-tenth. So I can write it as a fraction or a decimal because there are ten columns, so the shaded part is one-tenth. Now when we look at number two, the grid represents one. What does the shaded portion represent? Well, if this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, to find out how many squares are in the whole thing, I'm going to do 10 times 10, which equals 100. And they've shaded 1 out of the 100. And remember, I can write that as 0 and 0, 1. 1, 1 hundredth, because this is in the tenths, and this is the hundredths place value. Okay? There are 100 squares in the whole, so each one in the, in the whole piece so each one is one one hundredth. Okay, let's move on to the next problem. How many small, how many of the small rectangular pieces, how many of the 
many of the small rectangular pieces, one of them is shaded, are there in the unit square? Oh, I see that there's a tiny piece up here that's shaded, right? So, wow, that's a lot, huh? So, I know that this is from the last problem. I know that this is 100 squares in here, and then it looks like there are 10, 20, 30, let's see, is that 40? I think there are 10 of the tiny rectangles in each square. So there's going to be 10 in here. And they have shaded in one. All right? So I think that there are 1,000 squares. If each one of these, right? So if I did 10 and each square had 10 in them, 10 times 100 is going to be 1,000 squares in, in this square in this box. Tiny rectangular squares. All right. And that's all they're asking is how many. So I think there's going to be a thousand because there are 10 in each one. How do you think we write the number 1,000th at the decimal? Oh, we just wrote that, didn't we, in the, in the warm up? So we write 1 tenth as 1 tenth because that's the tenths place. 1 one hundredth as, like this because this is tenths and this is hundredths. And if it's 1 one hundredth, I need that 1 to be in the hundredth place so that when I write a decimal for thousandths, I'm going to do tenths, hundredths, and thousandths. And I need the 1 to end up in the thousandths place value. All right. And I think that pattern would continue. So if we would do one ten thousandth, right, we would do tenths, hundredths, thousandths, and then that one has to land in the ten thousandths place. And I think that pattern just continues. Okay. Let's see what they have next for us. How many of the tiny shaded rectangles are there in the whole unit square? Well, we talked about if there are 10 in each one of these little things and there are 100 squares all together, I would do 10 times 100, and I think that there are a 1,000 of them. I know that because there are 10 in each. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, and then there are 10 of those, 10 hundreds, and 10 hundreds is the same as a 1,000. Okay, let's see what's next. How much of the whole square is shaded? Good question. How much of that whole square is shaded? I think it's one one thousandth. But it's hard to see what's shaded there. Looks like it's this whole thing here. Ha the number one one thousand can always also be written in decimal form as one in the thousandths place. One in the thousandths place. We call it thousandth. So you got to be careful when we're reading numbers that that th means that it is smaller than one. It's not a thousand, it's a thousandth. How do you think we could write four thousandths as a decimal? Oh, that is a good question. So remember we have to be in the, here's the ones place, tenths, hundredths, thousandths place. So when we're writing in the thousandths place, we're going to use this number four, because there are four thousandths. Good job. Let's see what's next. What do they ask us next? Today we represented one-tenth, one-hundredth, one-thousandths in different places. What are some different ways we can represent one-hundredth? Well, we can represent it as a fraction. We can represent it as a decimal. Or we could draw a picture which would take forever, right? It would be this little square here is one hundredth. If we split that square into hundredths. And the same thing with thousands, right? What are some different ways we can represent one thousandth? Well, we can write a fraction, one over a thousand or one out of a thousand. We can write it as a decimal, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, has to end in a thousandths place. Or we could draw a big old grid, Break it up into hundredths, and it would be one of those squares inside. So it's a really tiny fraction, really tiny. All right, what did we learn about thousands, one one thousand today? We learned, and what do you still wonder about that? You could record those in your journal or on a sheet of paper for your teacher and share it with your class. All right.
ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me for lesson one of unit five, and I will see you again in lesson two. Thanks for watching.